Hey guys, welcome to the Fast Lane Car. My name is Tommy, and today this is your ultimate, your definitive buyer's guide on everything Jeep Wrangler. This is going to be a great video for you guys out there who are looking to buy a new 2020 Wrangler, who want to know all the options that I think you should buy and that you shouldn't buy as well. Now, who am I? Well, I've been working for the Fast Lane Car for about 10 years now, and I am a huge Jeep guy. In the last two years, we've owned four Wranglers and I've been very fortunate to drive just about every single version of the brand new Wrangler. So I've had a lot of experience on road, off road, in the dirt, on the highway in these new Wranglers. So I think I'm qualified to tell you what you should buy and what you should stay away from, what you should save your money on. And that's going to be the interesting part. So let's get right into it. The Jeep Wrangler JL, as it's known, has been around for a couple of years now. That's the current internal code for this generation of Wrangler. JL. And there's actually a big decision you have to make right off the bat. Do you have a family? Do you have a need to carry a lot of stuff? If so, you're going to have to buy the four-door version because there are two configurations, the short wheelbase two-door and the long wheelbase four-door unlimited. Now, in case you're wondering, the four-door vastly outsells the two-door. It's far more popular because it's just far more useful. The rear seats are accessible, the trunk is much larger, and there's just more room to live your life in. If you carry more than one person regularly, absolutely get the four-door. The two-door rear seat is kind of miserable, and getting in and out is a pain in the butt. However, if it's just you and the spouse, then maybe look at getting the two-door if you don't need the extra space. Save yourself some money. All right, so you've decided two-door and four-door. What's it going to cost you? Well, there are over 12 variants of the Wrangler available right now. 12 specific trims, and it's very confusing, but really there are four main trims. In the two-door, it starts out as a Sport with an MSRP of just under $30,000. Then there is the Sport S, which is kind of a gussied up Sport. That starts at just under $33,000. And then there is the Rubicon, the off-road version, which starts at just over $40,000. Now, in this video, we're going to focus more on the Unlimited, the four-door, because that's what most of you out there are actually buying. So the Unlimited starts at $33,290. The Sport S comes in at $36,000. There's a four-door only version called the Sahara, or the luxury model. That starts at just over forty dollars And then the Top Dog off-road Rubicon starts at just under $44,000 thousand dollars and all these prices include the fifteen hundred dollar destination fee. So we're going to get into all the trims here in a second and see what they mean. We're also going to talk about some of the special editions that are brand new for 2020 but let's start out talking about the engine. So you've decided you want either a two-door or a four-door vehicle. Most of you want the four-door so it means you're going to have a choice of one of four engines depending on trim and that's the big caveat here. Be sure to head over to jeep.com to spec out your ideal Wrangler because some options are only available in certain trims, but really there are four engine options. Now, in previous years, the base engine was a 3.6 liter V6. It was your standard, naturally aspirated corporate V6. It called the Pentastar, and it still is the base engine for 2020. It develops 285 horsepower, 260 pound-feet of torque, but for 2020, for the same price or potentially even a little bit less, you can get a two liter turbo inline four cylinder engine. This is an e-torque engine, which means it has a little bit of an electric boost right off the bat. It develops 270 horsepower, 295 pound feet of torque. And then there is a top dog engine, which is a three liter diesel. It develops 260 horsepower, 442 pound-feet of torque. It's going to be the most fuel efficient and by far the more, most powerful. But there are a bunch of catches that we have to talk about right now. Transmission-wise, there's two transmissions, a six-speed manual and an eight-speed automatic. If you're a big fan of rowing your own gears, you have to get the naturally aspirated V6, the first engine option. And that's because it's not available on any of the other engines. That will save you some money, however, because that's going to be your cheapest configuration. If you want an 8-speed automatic on that V6, it's going to be a $2,700 upgrade on the Sport of Rubicon and $2,000 on a Sahara. Now, the 2-liter 4-cylinder I mentioned could potentially be a little cheaper than the base 3.6, and that's because if you compare automatic V6 to automatic 4-cylinder, the 4-cylinder now is actually a wee bit cheaper. Jeep is trying to push more consumers into the 4-cylinder turbo. 
Um, and then we get to the V6 diesel. This is a brand new engine. It's a three liter eco diesel engine, brand new generation engine as well, but it is just so significantly expensive. Now the MPG on the highway is great, close to 30 miles per gallon. But think about how far you can drive at current gas prices before you're gonna make up that cost in MPGs. The other thing to keep in mind is it's a somewhat untested engine as well. Uh, however, if you plan on sticking huge tires on your Wrangler right off the bat, in the past with big heavy axles and a lot of upgrades, some people have needed to swap for V8 engines. The diesel prevents you from doing that. So this diesel engine is powerful enough where if you're looking at going to 38, 40 inch tires, you're gonna be able to do it right off the bat with a diesel. So that's the only way I would consider buying the diesel. So now we've got two engine options, the base V6 and the two liter turbo four cylinder. Now I had a chance, we actually owned a two liter four cylinder JL for um, several months. This Jeep Wrangler is equipped with the two liter turbocharged four cylinder engine. And when this engine came out, the Jeep purists kind of lost it because a turbocharger and a Jeep from the factory, how can that be? But I'm here to tell you that with 295 pound-feet of torque and these 410 gears, this Jeep just climbs and crawls over just about everything. It does sound like a sewing machine or a Dyson as I like to say, but it does just crawl over anything you throw at it, which is pretty great. Here's the rub on the two liter. Very powerful. A lot of acceleration right off the bat. There's very little turbo lag, and that 295 pound-feet of torque really slaps you in the back. If you're looking for a fast Wrangler, other than a diesel, this two liter is probably gonna blow you away. It's also quite a bit more efficient than the V6, a few MPGs more efficient. However, I wasn't a huge fan of the, the two liter turbo engine. It just felt a little bit high strung for a Wrangler. So it always felt like it was tugging at the leash, wanting to go. And it was also, I found to be quite unrefined. It just didn't make a very good noise. It was kind of rough and it was just kind of hard to drive linearly because that turbo was always ready to go, always ready to get you up to speed. So a good engine, a powerful engine, but not the engine I would choose. I would actually go for just the regular 3.6 liter Pentastar V6. Now in the Wrangler, it has been around since 2012. It's been around for eight years now. It's proven itself to be quite reliable. As the Jeep guys, that Pentastar is a strong engine. It's not as powerful as the other options, but it'll get you where you need to go. I would probably get it with a manual transmission given the choice. It's a nice tight little six speed manual transmission. It's the proven engine. It's not the most fuel efficient engine. It's not the most fun engine, but in a Wrangler, it's the best fit. Let's dive into the many, many trims. And in this video, we're gonna focus on the trims available in the four door unlimited, because once again, that's the one that you all out there are buying. So on the base end of the spectrum, you'll find the Sport. And the Sport really is a very, basic vehicle. It comes out of the gate with cloth seats, a manual transmission, no power windows, no power locks. This is gonna be your ultimate stripped down Wrangler. And I think it's a great value if you're just looking to get into a Wrangler relatively affordably. You wanna have fun with the top off and the doors off. You wanna maybe do some light off-roading. The Sport is the one for you. Now the biggest drawback with the Sport is not the wheels. So it only comes with these kind of dinky looking little steel wheels, but it's the fact that you can't actually get all that many options on a Sport. So there's a bunch of really kind of exciting options on the 2020 Wrangler, but you can't opt for them if you get the base model Sport. So stuff as the LED headlights are not available. Um, it, you know, it's got a really small little screen. You can't upgrade to the big 8.4 inch screen. Uh, you're just kind of locked in, but if you're just looking for a cheap Wrangler to get you where you need to go, the Sport is definitely not actually a bad option. Now the one that you see the most of is the trim up from the Sport, and that's called the Sport S. And you see this vehicle all over the place, even if you don't recognize it. The biggest way to differentiate the S from the standard Sport are the wheels. So the basic Sport have these black painted steel wheels. The Sport S has a nicer silver alloy wheel. It also comes standard with, drum roll please, power windows and power door locks. And this is where you can start looking at a bunch of options on the Sport S. So now you have the availability to buy some of the safety groups, some of the lighting groups, um, some of the stuff that you may want if you are planning on daily driving your Wrangler. Up from the Sport S is the Sahara. So the Sahara comes with body colored fenders, but it also comes with a lot of 
kind of comfort goodies. It comes with a nicer, larger wheel. Uh, you're able to get all sorts of leather upgrades and Uconnect upgrades and ways to make that vehicle into kind of your luxury city going Wrangler. And then of course, the top dog Wrangler is the Rubicon. And why is the Rubicon top dog? Because of its four wheel drive system. Now in every Wrangler, you'll pretty much find the command track four wheel drive system. This is your standard Wrangler four wheel drive. So two wheel drive, four high, and four low. It's a great system, it works well. It has something called a brake lock differential system. So if you get some wheels spinning, it'll grab the brakes to try to force power where it needs to go. But it's not gonna get you down the Rubicon Trail. For that, you're gonna need to get the Rubicon Wrangler, which comes with the Rock Track four wheel drive system. So this includes beefier axles, it includes locking differentials, it includes a steeper axle ratio for better crawling capability. That's the one you're gonna want if you're going deep into the woods. There's actually a third four wheel drive system available on the Sahara only called Select Track. And this is a full time four wheel drive system. It's a $600 option, but it allows for full time four wheel drive. So you're not futzing with the lever ever if you live in a cold snowy environment. So the question is, where do you need to go and how far do you need to go down the trail? A standard Wrangler, even in base sport form, is gonna be one of the most capable four-wheel drives on the market. Solid axles, body on frame, fairly good underbody protection. It's all you need. It will get you 95% of the places. But if you're looking on seriously upgrading your Jeep for heavy off-road use, you just gotta go for the Rubicon straight out of the box. That's the one that comes standard with the locking differentials, the beefier front axle, the better gear ratio for off-roading. That's the one you're gonna want if you're going deep into the woods, deep into the wilderness. Now, what are some of the cool upgrade packages and perhaps uncool upgrade packages available on the Wranglers now? Well, there's a bunch of safety groups. So the base model Wrangler doesn't come with blind spot monitoring or backup sensors. It does come with a backup camera, but really in terms of safety equipment, that's about it. If you actually want your vehicle to perform a lot more like some of the slightly autonomous new cars available on the market, definitely look at the safety group. So there's actually two of them depending on trim. The safety group, which is a thousand dollar option, includes blind spot detection, which you know when you're changing lanes is great to have. Park sense rear parking assist, those are the parking beepers. Then there's also another group called the advanced safety group for $800 and that's where some of that autonomy comes in and I'm talking about adaptive cruise control. So set the cruise control and it will follow the car in front of you at the set speed so that you don't have to keep adjusting cruise control and traffic. And it also comes with forward collision warning. So if the car in front of you slams on its brakes, you're not paying attention, the Jeep will be like, hey, wake up dummy, we're about to get in an accident. Of course, all these Wranglers now come equipped with four airbags from the factory front and then side protection. From there, there's actually, depending on trim once again, something called the technology group, which is a $995 option. So. The base Wrangler in the Sport and Sport S have this little itty bitty, it's called a Uconnect touchscreen. It's just five inches um, diagonally. It's a pretty good system, pretty easy to use, but doesn't have a lot of the functionality of some of the larger screens that you'd come to expect. It's pretty basic. Now for $995, you can upgrade to a seven inch Uconnect 4 system with Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, and that'll actually include automatic climate control as well. So that is a nice feature to have, so you're not looking at a little itty bitty screen, and for $1,000, it's a pretty good upgrade. Then, if you are looking at a Sahara or a Rubicon, there's actually even a larger screen. It's an 8.4 inch radio. Um, it's $1,700, but it's got 4G LTE Wi-Fi. It comes with premium audio sound system when you get this package, and that's gonna be your best top of the line system. Personally, I would just stick with the seven inch. The five inch is a little bit too small, a little bit too dinky. The 8.4 is overkill. You really don't need it. Just get the seven inch system. From there, there is a convenience group. So that gives you garage door opener, remote start on automatic transmissions. It's a $395 option. Definitely worth it if you live in a cold environment or if you need a home link garage door opener. There's also a cold weather group, $700. A must have if you live in a cold environment. So that's gonna give you heated seats and one amazing heated steering wheel. That steering wheel heats up so quickly, you'd be amazed, it'll fry your hands off. Uh, it's available in both cloth and the leather seat configuration, depending on which one you have. I love the cold weather group. If you live in Florida, California, don't worry about it, save 700 bucks. But if you live in a place where you need it, 
definitely, definitely worth it. Now, depending on the trim, there's actually two different headlight groups. There's an LED headlight and fog light group, so getting rid of the halogens for a nice set of LEDs. And then there's the LED lighting group, which once again converts the front lights to LEDs, but also the tail lights so you get a more modern look. And this is where we need to talk for a second because the stock headlights on the Wrangler are terrible. They are really, really bad. The high beams really don't do anything to improve it. They're candlesticks in the wind. They are really pretty useless. The only thing they're good at is clearing snow in the cold because the halogens get nice and warm. But LEDs not only look cooler, they work so much better. Now I'm talking about the front lights. In the rear, ah, who cares? Do you really need LED rear tail lights? I don't think so, but on certain trims they force you to get them anyways. Uh, definitely look into the LED group. Now, the other way you can do that, of course, is just upgrading the headlights separately on your own. So pulling them out, they're not, well, they're actually unfortunately too easy to pull out, they can be stolen, but just pull them out and then upgrade to your LEDs yourself. Uh, you might be able to save some money, but for $745 on the base LED group, definitely worth it. And the next thing you should absolutely get is a trailer tow group. This is gonna be about an $800 option as well. It not only gives you a 240 amp alternator, a beefy battery, and the trailer hitch in the rear. It also gives you a set of auxiliary switches right in the middle so you can wire up lights and accessories directly to the car. You don't have to cut holes for switches if you plan on adding LEDs in the future. This is the best deal in the Wrangler, the trailer tow group. Get it 100% of the time. Definitely recommend it. Cigarette group, really only if you want it. So. Let's talk about some of the other options. I know it's a long video, but hopefully this is helpful if you're actually looking at buying a 2020. Tops, because the Wrangler is known for being a convertible. But what happens if you want to secure stuff in or just keep you out of the elements? Well, there's a bunch of different top options available on the Wrangler. So most Wranglers are going to come standard with something called the Sunrider Soft Top. It's a zipperless system. You can fold back the front part of the soft top so you have some open air. It's a great system. I really am happy with the new Best Top Sunrider Soft Top, but it's surprisingly quiet and very easy to use. But if you live in a city where potentially stuff will be stolen, the soft top is not the way to go. You're going to have to upgrade to a hard top. It's a three-piece hard top, and it's available across the range for $1,200. It's got these removable panels in the front that you can pull off, let the sunshine in, but then you can also button it up and keep everything nice and safe. Now that comes standard painted black. It's actually just a black plastic. If, for example, you want it to be body colored to match the rest of the Jeep, that's going to cost you. It's going to go from about $1,200 all the way up to $2,200. So it's another $1,000 to have it painted. If you're happy with the soft top, there's actually a premium option that's less tear resistant and a tan one. The final option is something called the Sky One Touch Top, and this is an interesting top design. So rather than removing a hard top panel or folding back fabric, you push a button and a center fabric section on a somewhat hard, somewhat canvas top retracts back. It's pretty cool stuff, but it's very expensive, $4,000. If it was me, I would just get the standard three-piece hardtop, um, leave it painted black, it's fine, it's going to be more durable than a uh, body-colored one, and it'll save you some money. There's also a dual-top group if you really want the hard and the soft top, but that completely ruins your trunk space, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. So, some other options available on the Wrangler lineup. Um, Rubicon options give you a choice of tires now, which is cool, so you can get all terrains or mud terrains. Um, there are a bunch of Mopar accessories, uh, you know, black filler doors. A reinforced hinge gate is great if you're planning on putting a big tire on the back. Uh, there's a bunch of different steps. Given the choice, I would absolutely take the rock sliders with steps. I think it's a really cool design. Give you some rocker protection if you're going off-road, it's $1,000. The other steps I would leave behind. There's a hard top headliner, which is a carpet that they glue onto the inside of the um, hard top to reduce you know, sound inside. It's $525. Don't get it. It's absolutely not worth it. Um, Remote proximity entry is one you need to get. So all Wranglers now have push button start. But if you want to get into your Wrangler when it's locked with groceries in your hand and you want to just reach for the handle and open it, you need the remote proximity entry. That should absolutely be standard, but it's not. Definitely get it. Remote start is kind of up to you, $500. Alpine Premium Sound is a standalone option too. So that's the upgraded audio. It's $1,300. It's got an incredible bass system. Frankly, the bass uh, audio system is all right. I probably wouldn't upgrade to the Alpine. Um, in terms of seating, there's actually a few different seat options. 
There's a black cloth and a tan cloth. I really like the tan cloth, but it will get dirty if you're off-roading a bunch. Uh, and then there's now actually two different leather options. There's a stitched leather or a perforated leather. The stitched leather had these little stitched in cushions in the middle. Uh, it's $1,800 though for leather. So you're gonna have to ask yourself, is it worth having that durability of the leather? Frankly, none of the seats are all that comfortable. They're too hard, they're not very supportive. So I'd probably just get the cloth seats, save 1800 bucks with the leather. Uh, if you want your fenders painted at the same color as your body, it's gonna be about $500. And then the worst option that you can possibly get is the trail rated kit, which is like $200 for a toe strap and some gloves. I lose sleep at night that they offer this. Please don't equip it if you have the option. Of course, a lot of you guys out there are just gonna go to your dealer and pick one off the lot, but if you really wanna spec it, that's kind of a sense of some of the options and some of the trims available for the Wrangler. All right, now let's zip through this real quick because we have a bunch of 2020 special editions. And Jeep loves to do this. They release kind of different colors or different uh, sticker options or different suspension options. They call it some really cool name and they charge a lot for it, but in some cases, they're pretty good deals. So for 2020, there's a Willy Sport Black and Tan, Sport Altitude Willys, Freedom Sahara Altitude North Edition, and Rubicon Recon Edition. And we'll talk about them really quick and what they give you. So the Willy Sport is probably my favorite Wrangler JL available on the market right now. $32,000 for the two-door, $35,000 for the four-door. It's based on the base model Sport, but you get rid of those steel wheels. They give you a really nice set of beefy off-road tires. Uh, it comes with a limited slip rear differential, which is great for off-road. It comes with Rubicon rock rails. It comes with Rubicon shocks. 32-inch Firestone Destination mud terrain tires. This is one heck of a value. If you can't afford the Rubicon, but you still want one that'll go off-road quite far and looks really cool out of the factory, the Wrangler Willy Sport is the one for you. Then, um, if you want the Willys, but you also want a bunch of options, there's a standard Willys. So that one has uh, LED headlights, and it gives you the option for many, many things. Um, there's a diesel engine option um, as well. It also gives you power windows and power locks if you want just the standard Willys. Um, okay, next up is the black and tan edition, which is based on the sport trim with some cool paint, basically, and uh, the technology group is standard. There's a freedom edition, which is also based on the sport. That gives you off-road tires, um, some military-themed stickers, and decal Sunrider uh, soft top. There's a sport altitude, which is a four-door only trim. All three engines are available. Gives you big wheels, all black interior, um, some U-Connect uh, stuff. Sahara Altitude, I'm sorry, I, I, I can't memorize these. These change so often I just have to read off the script. But the Sahara Altitude is the same as a Sport Altitude, but based on the Sahara. Uh, there's also a North Edition, which is only available in the two liter with some cool wheels. You can actually also get the North Edition in a bunch of other Wrang uh, Jeep products if you so desire. And then the Rubicon Recon, which is actually a cool trim. Changes the front end around, gives you red accents on the interior, red seat belts. Um, only available in the two liter, and it is very expensive, but if you kind of want the top dog Wrangler Rubicon ready to go, uh, the Recon with the 33 inch Falcon Wild Peaks is a cool thing. So, there you have it, your basic Wrangler buyer's guide. Some other options that are definitely worth buying. The steel bumper group on the uh, Rubicon models is expensive, but allows you just to slap a winch in there. It's a great bumper system. Uh, wheels and tires, take a look at the configurator. I can't know your taste, but there's a bunch of different wheel options, bunch of different colors. Uh, once again, pick your favorite, but spoiler alert, Hella Yella is the best color. So that's the color you should get. But as always, this is Tommy with the Fastlane Car. If you're wondering which one I would get, absolutely get the four-door Willy Sport. It's the best deal, gets you the Rubicon shocks, the cool tires, and will get you down the trail super far straight out of the box without having to spend well over 40 grand for a Rubicon. Thank you so much for watching. Head over to tflcar.com for the latest and greatest in everything Wrangler reviews.